What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And yes, today we're talking about this. This is the Teenage Engineering TX6, a six channel stereo, 12 channel mono mixer, audio interface, performance tool, recorder, and so much more. To me, this is the multi tool of audio interfaces the one that can get so many jobs done for music production, for performance, for DJing, for band jam outs, whatever you want to call it, this thing can do it all. And yes, it does have a hefty price tag of $11.99. We're gonna get into that in a second. Let's talk about this right now. Let's go! So what you see right here in the palm of my hand is a amazing piece of kit. Uh, I've been using this for almost nine months now, and uh, it's truly incredible what it can do. So let me turn it on and show you all the things that I've been using it for. Of course, you have every individual fader, which can be mono, or it could be stereo, depending on you know what input it accepts. Anytime you plug in anything, it'll ask right there, do you want it to be stereo, split, meaning you know split mono or mono? right? You have a sit on button, you have a scroll wheel, you have two effects knobs, right? You have mute solo uh, type bu buttons here, right? You have three different uh, knobs for either equalization, for compression, all the different things that you can do with this device, right? It has everything from, you know, whatever you're going to solo to how are you going to use this as a USB interface. You have two channel in, which is basically a two way going back and forth to your computer or iPad. 12 channel in, which basically allows you to send all your audio from your DAW or your digital audio workstation in separate different buses to all these different channels, right? To six different stereo channels or 12 different mono channels. Or you have 12 out, which basically means you want all 12 of these going out to a DAW and then you can, um, you know, you can record them individually in a mix. So uh, there's that, right? You can set your tempo, right? So that if you're using delays or reverbs, it locks to the tempo. Of course, you have MIDI clock. You have disc mode where you can plug in a USB stick and then record directly to this USB stick from any of the ways that you are using the TX6. You can change your different pots. These are called pots. You know, you can have it as a custom where it does mid, low, and high. You can have it as a filter, auxiliary, or compression. You know, you can have your effects on these. There's so many ways to freak these different pots, right? You can also use this as a synth. I've never really used that. It has MIDI built in where you can use this almost like a finger drumming uh, type of device or use this as a, a, a mixer inside your DAW to be able to control, you know, your mixer faders inside your DAW or something like that. It has Bluetooth um, BLE so that if you want to be able to control your DAW using this functionality, using the TX6, you can do that. And then you can set different scenes. It also has a guitar tuner and DJ functionality as well as uh, recording memos and has a built-in uh, limiter and uh, VO unit, all different types of things that you can do uh, with this device. And then on the front, you think you would think this is a uh, volume knob, but it's actually a 3.5 millimeter jack that goes in, into an eighth inch right there. We also have a second headphone out, an auxiliary jack to plug things in. You have a Q button and an aux button uh, to be able to control this, usually kind of in a in a DJ format or something like that. Now it does have a faux kind of navy uh, leather, uh, faux leather back, which is very nice. And it's built extremely well. Um, as you can see, yep, I have been using this quite a bit. So I have a little bit of wear on uh, my buttons here, but you have two effects buttons, right? In your effects buttons, if you hit shift with the effects, you'll be able to see you have on this first effects, you have reverb, right? Which has, you know, everything from light to drone, you have uh, a chorus, which has everything from subtle to strong. You have a delay, which has everything from one eighth to a mash, uh, depending on you know what type of delay you want. Uh, and those are all on the first effects. The second effects, you have your tape stop. You know your tape stop actually has you know a pong functionality, a stop uh, two, which is very fast, and a stop one is just kind of slow. You have a filter, which you can change the resonance and the cutoff. There's a crush. There's a distortion. There's tremola or tremola. Um, 
however you say that. <laughs> uh, you have a freeze. Uh, 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 you have a freeze effects, uh, and then it goes back to tape. So, with all that being said, you can do so many different things with this specific audio interface mixer. So let me show you a few ways that I've been using it over the last nine months. So first things first, for everybody who's been watching my layup drills, my daily beat kind of uh, exercise that I do that I've been putting up on IG and also here on YouTube, you know, you'll see this similar setup that I use every day. I'm using the Teenage Engineering OP1 field. Uh, I'm using this mostly for my drum samples, uh, for my bases, basically I'm using this as a hardware synth and I'm sending that directly in to the channel one of my TX6. I'll save that as stereo, boom, now it's set as stereo right there. Then I'm plugging the TX6 directly into my iPad mini six so that it reads it here, right? Uh, and so if you see here, I have, I go up here, you'll see that I have two channels because right now, on my, on my uh, TX6, I'm having it as a two-channel mixer, right? I'll get to it in a second if I'm wanting to separate all the sounds. But basically, what you'll see is, you know, you have a two-channel mixer going, and, uh, you know, you'll be able to send audio from whatever you need to send it from, from this TX6 back into my iPad. That's how I'm using this. Now, I actually have this cord right here. <laughs> this cord right here is actually streaming and going directly into... Uh, going directly into Ecamm Live, and I'm using an Apogee Boom underneath my desk that's receiving all the sounds from my TX6 into there so I can record directly into uh, my uh, Ecamm Live, and that's how I actually record all these videos every day. Now, so you have my OP1 field going directly from 8th to 8th into my TX6, and then my TX6 is going into my iPad. That's how I'm doing a lot of my programming. And then I'm sending that signal into Ecamm Live. Uh, and so that's how I have this set up. For those who are trying to figure out all the ways that you can connect this, let me show you how I connect it in a studio environment. All right, so let me show y'all how uh, we got everything rocking. Got KG, he's over here on Logic, running into, let's see, five, six over here. I got Logic on my iPad running into one, two. I got the OP1 field running into three, four. Of course, the CMX key uh, keyboard is plugged into my iPad. The Tula mic is plugged into my OP1 field. We got everything running into the TX6. X is OP1 original is running. I believe that is seven, eight. Uh, we're running Loopy Pro as our main DAW to record. Uh, we got the bass over there that's running into 1112. And Gary over here, he is running into the ID4, running back into this. So listen, we got all 12 channels rocking. And uh, yeah, we're about to get busy. This is how we get down. So you can see, there are so many ways that you can connect the TX6, right? You can connect it as kind of like your own standalone MIDI production mixer audio interface that has a ton of ins and outs, right? You also have a way that you can control it in a studio environment with four to five different players actually playing all at once as a mixer and then being able to send all of that into something like a, you know, a Loopy Pro or even Logic Pro. And so let me go into Logic Pro and show you exactly how I have it set up for different scenarios. Okay, so here's the track that I recently worked on. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change in Logic Pro. I'm gonna change it to make sure that it has the 12 outs. So I'm gonna go into my TX6 and I'm gonna change this to 12 ins because it's receiving 12 channels in. And as you can see, now it understands that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 12. So if I go into any of my sounds in my mixer in Logic, I can ask, I can tell it, send this specific sound, whether it's drums or something like that. I can send that to my stereo out. That's 1 and 2. I can send it to 3 and 4, which is 2, 5 and 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way down. So if I'm able to play this track... You 
can see that I can literally mix these sounds directly from my mixer because they're all being sent out to different channels depending on what sounds that I do. So what I normally do is I put my drums, I put my drums, let's see if I can bring this up here a little bit more. All right, so I'll put my drums on one and two, I put my percussions on three and four, I put my bass on five and six, I put my melodies or my samples or whatever on seven and eight, I put my extra melodies or any type of you know things that I'm embellishing on nine and 10, and my lead sense or my hook or chorus sounds on 11, 12. That's kind of how I have it set in this environment. So you can see I can mute these functions, right? If I play that uh, back, so you can see that I have been I'm able to play use the two effects Right, you can use them both at the same time or you can kind of just go in and out. That's kind of how I'm performing using the TX6 as a performance device, but I'm also mixing all my sounds in once I've already developed the, uh, the idea, the composition, and I'm able to be able to play it out and uh, perform it and it's super fun to use. And so, you know, I'm able to do all of those things, but when I'm in the studio environment, we're bringing in all the other players and everybody has their own channel to be able to freak and I do the opposite. I send all of the sounds into, into, my, uh, into Logic or Loopy Pro or something like that and um, I'm able to play you know, basically six stereo or 12 mono sounds into uh, Logic at once at the same time recording directly in. It's incredibly capable, and incredibly powerful, and that's why um, I can understand the price point for this. What other audio interface uh, gives you this type of form factor, this type of footprint, and is able to do as much? That's why I can understand the price point of eleven ninety nine. It's built well, and uh, you know it has so much to offer. And then on top of that, with Teenage Engineering and the way that they deliver firmware updates and software updates you get different functionality over the years. Even with the original OP1, they were still um, giving updates and, and, and you know software firmware updates to that device 10 years after it was released. And so you're getting a device that you can bank on at least being able capable for the next 10 years. Now, for those who you know are singer songwriters, right? And those who want to be able to record mics into this, right? There's different ways that you can do that. Yet, this doesn't have your traditional mic inputs that you would see on a normal audio interface. This doesn't have your, your, your typical um, phantom power and those types of things, right? So as a production tool, as a DJ tool, as something you know that can be a mixer for a lot of situations for music producers, this still does a, a ton. And I know there's a lot of people out there who have audio interfaces um, who never plug a mic in because it's basically just the, the way that they interact with the computer and their keyboards and other peripherals. So, um, you know, yes, it's expensive. Yes, um, would I say it's worth the money? Absolutely. I'm using this every single day and it's working flawlessly. I haven't really had any issues at all. It's built well. I'm 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 taking it everywhere with me, anywhere I go um, when I'm creating, and uh, it's kept up very well. Yes, I have a couple of scratches where I've been playing, but that's just wear and tear of using it a lot. And so, um, what can I say? This thing works well. Um, it's built well, and it has a ton of features that you can do. So if you're a singer songwriter and you're trying to get the vocals out, uh, you know what I'm using is the Tula mic at the moment. And the Tula mic is an amazing uh, piece of hardware to be able to uh, have a great quality mic, very small form factor, along with the TX6. This is the Tula mic and the TX6. Now the Tula mic is about 250, 220, depending on when you get it. Um, but with these two pieces, you know you can you know you can record uh, from eighth to to eighth in there like that. I've done that, 
or you can, can plug, you know, if you have a setup like mine, um, how I'm using it is I plug the Tula mic directly into my OP1 field and I'm sampling that um, using the sample function in my OP1 field and sending that back out to my TX6 here. You know, that's a way to get good quality audio to your to your TX6 back into your DAW. And we've recorded guitar, we've recorded vocals, we've, re we've tried to record horns. Doesn't really work too well on very, very loud objects, but uh, it works well for singer songwriters. And then on top of that, this has, you know, noise cancellation built in, so that works well. But what I'm truly excited about is Teenage Engineering's upcoming release of their CM15 microphone. Now it's part of their field series, and what it's going to be able to do is give you outstanding large diaphragm, uh, a microphone that is able, that's capable of producing stellar quality. Uh, and I've actually tried it when I was out there in, in Sweden back last year. So if you're a professional and you're thinking about, I wanna have the top quality with the top mobility, that's why I love Teenage Engineering products, right? You're getting a very, very small, capable uh, audio interface right, mixer, performer, and then you bring that into a very small, uh, large diaphragm microphone that can be plugged into this, can work together, you're gonna start seeing that you're having a super capable um, studio setup, you know, that can fit, be, be super mobile. You could be in the car, you could be in the airplane, you could, you know, you could take this on a trip, Airbnb, and have outstanding quality that's ready to go uh, for distribution. So, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm super excited to get my hands on that. I've only tested the beta version of the CM15. I have not had my own review unit to test out yet. But what I'm telling you is, when you start to think about what you're investing in and the amount of time that you're going to be using a product or a service, you gotta think about, you know, how much you're going to get out of that and are you really gonna use it to those fullest capabilities. The same way I'm using, you know, professional DSLR cameras to shoot these videos or professional lighting to get lighting you're gonna have to invest if you're looking to do things in a super professional manner this is my setup I carry a bag of wires with me that work extremely well with my TX6 um, some can be purchased directly to from teenage engineering site some can be you know purchased third party but they do have very small let me see if you can see that you, you're going to need cables that have very small um, you know, kind of parts at the end right here so that they all can fit. Um, and that was something that I did have to invest a little bit extra in, making sure that all of my cables work together. But uh, I have a, a lot of cables that I can run, whether it's, uh, you know, one that goes from eighth to quarter or eighth to eighth or, you know, eighth to uh, eighth. And then I put on a little adapter that'll give me, you know, uh, availabilities to plug in my iPhone or plug in uh, my iPad. I also have cables like this where, you know, you can plug in, it goes eighth to a female quarter where I've plugged in bass and guitar. So if I plug in a bass or a guitar, you know, you can hit shift on wherever that's at. You can see you can add a filter to that. You can add EQ. You can add compression. You can add gain, you can pan it. And so I've been able to get really good settings. And then you can set that, you know, and save it as a scene. You know, if you save it as a scene, so let me see if you can see that there. If you save it as a scene, you're able to uh, reload that whenever you're in that type of environment. I'm just having a ball. And, uh, you know, proof is in the pudding. You know, uh, I'm doing this every day this year. Uh, I'm almost half of the year in on making a beat or some type of composition using this setup. And so it's working flawlessly and uh, I can completely recommend it. Now, if you're a beginner or you're a hobbyist or somebody who uh, just, you know, is looking to get into music production, there's a ton of other really capable options. But if you're a professional, somebody like myself who wants to invest in the best of gear, look no further. And you wanna be mobile? Look no further than using something like the TX6, something like the OP1 Field, even the Tula mic, and I've been doing everything on this iPad Mini 6. Trust me, it works, and it works extremely well. Well, that's basically it. That's what I have for y'all today. This is the Teenage Engineering TX6. It's my favorite for the time being, and uh, I'm having a ball with it. If you have any questions, hit me up in the, in, in the comment section below. Uh, all the links, affiliate links, will be uh, in the description, uh, and check those out. And uh, if you're ready to get into it, 
you know, let me know. Hope everybody's staying safe and staying healthy. And uh, it's always good to come t come back and tell y'all about gear that really works well for me. So uh, I will catch y'all in the next one. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a great day. Head them out.